Joining me, the producer of Small Justice, Garland Waller, family law attorney and founder of the Child Abuse Forensic Institute, Seth Goldstein, and someone who disagrees with the premise, uh, uh, the author of Father's Rights, attorney Jeffrey Leving. Um, Garland, let me start with you. I have been guilty of saying before that, yes, sex abuse is sometimes a charge women will use in family court, and it does happen. But apparently, um, they are not being followed up on enough, and even in the face of uh, pretty legitimate cases, the fathers are getting the children? I don't understand. I mean, it happens all the time. This is actually a national scandal, and most people don't know about that. They think, if I am a mom and I go into court and I tell the family court judge, my child has been sexually abused, I've been beaten, they think the judge is going to be sympathetic. It's family court, they'll sure. get some support. And nothing could be further from the truth. Very often the women are upset, they're emotional, they don't look great. And the men look pretty much in control, they're, they're cool, they're calm. And the judge buys that. Also in family court, the judge can throw out anything the judge jolly well feels like. It's not like criminal court or civil court. The family courts are a world unto themselves. It is, and the judge is very omnipotent in those courts. Omnipotent is the perfect word. Yeah, so it's interesting that you're saying, uh, you know, the woman comes in probably a bit hysterical, and judge, I'm going to tell you all this story, and he's going, oh, I've got this hysterical broad right here, I'm not going to give her the kids. But you give, you set out an astonishing number, and I'd really like, uh, i got to get some support for this. Seventy percent of the cases where custody is challenged the father gets the child? Yes, even if he's a batterer and even if there's a history of sexual abuse. That it's, and it's in the, the challenged custody, the contested custody. Yeah, where they're custody. fighting over it. So yeah. it's a very different thing from just yeah, any he just, old. He wins the fight. He wins the fight. Yeah. He wins the fight. And you know, statistically, in terms of research, it's only about two or three percent of these allegations that are found to be false. So most of the time, you know, that's 98, 97 yeah. percent. Yeah. There's some truth. There's some legitimate reason why they're, you know, there's evidence. Yeah. Oh, well, I want, I want to play a couple of sound bites for you. This is a home video a mother took of her child. Suzanne, please, please. Suzanne. Suzanne, please, come here. Just saying, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to go now. Do we know that she's okay? I mean, she says, I want my daddy. Well, which daddy does she want? No, she says, I don't want to go to my daddy's house. Okay, I don't want to go. She, I don't want to go to my daddy's house. And you okay. know, the, one of the things that's important to me about this is any child that's having that much of a problem with the transition, no matter whether there's anything yeah. going on or not, parents who love their children want to work something out so the child doesn't suffer yeah. but to see this and to hear the child now this was not allowed into evidence yeah. no judge ever heard this okay. which I think is well, criminal. I want I want to go to another one that is just horrific let's listen to Pam and Jesse she said um, daddy put his body in my body maybe blue and I just like what denial like no way no way not my child not no he wouldn't do that beat me yes i'm thinking but touch my daughter no he said like if you tell i'll kill your mom whoa i mean this stuff is very very powerful stuff um let me go to jeffrey because jeffrey i've done i've done many programs on father's rights and i i always hear daddy never has a chance in court uh, what do you think of this I think children often do not have a chance in court because of gender bias against fathers and spinning of facts uh, to persuade judges to destroy father-child relationships. I've been listening to this interview and, and, and it's appalling to me. Uh, why don't we look at the statistics? According to the U.S. Department of Justice, 70 percent of confirmed cases of child abuse and 65 percent of parental murders of children are committed by mothers, not fathers all these women that want to push dads out of the lives of their children look at what the results are the absence of a biological father increases by 900 percent a daughter's vulnerability to rape and sexual abuse yeah. and often these assaults are committed by boyfriends of the mothers now let's deal with another issue of all these men having custody well i don't know what study or studies uh this uh, this debater yeah. is, is referring to i don't know if these are studies where maybe 10 people were yeah. talking uh, okay, to or 10, uh, 000, I, I agree and i wanted to i finish please 
please? But well, let's no, look at the United States government. We've got two and a half minutes left, and I you, can't. Could I finish, please, you gotta cut the I didn't mic, interrupt you. We've got to bring in Seth because, unfortunately, we'll have to do this again, but I've only got two minutes left, and I want to bring in Counselor. Um, Seth Goldstein, let me ask you about this fight because, again, I find it very upsetting, but in the documentary, it talks about one father who was listed as a pedophile, as a sexual abuser on the books who got his kids. Where's the Court of Appeals in all of this? Well, I'm not sure that most women have the ability to appeal the cases that uh, uh, you're describing. The, the issue most of the time is the matter of the quality of evidence that's presented to the judge. And most of the time I believe that the kids are shortchanged. I think uh, it's the one thing I agree with uh, uh, the uh, fellow at the other side of this issue at the moment is, is that the judges don't really see all the, the evidence. And more importantly, uh, in these cases, the evidence is often slanted by who has the most money to be able to afford the most convincing witnesses. Okay. And, and uh, let me ask you, Garland, about, about your own work, because you certainly, I hope, didn't want to put on tape women who were misusing these allegations. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, did, you have, did you have social workers talk to the kids, or did you, how were you able to confirm their cases? Well, there was an enormous amount of evidence, okay. and, and much of it was even in the court records. You know, this, but this father's rights response of, you, you actually can't believe the children and women have all this power, is actually, you know, that's their statistics, but, but what most of us study and realize and know is that this is simply not true. There's an enormous amount of gender bias in the court system today, but it's against moms. Okay, I'm going to give Jeffrey the last word, and we're going to do this again if we want to. So, Jeffrey, we're almost out of time, but let me throw this out to you. If there is evidence in the record that evidence, not just an allegation, that a father is abusing the children, you wouldn't you wouldn't support custody for that individual or unsupervised visits, would you? I would never support custody to a father if the father was abusing the child and it was not in the best interest of the child. My focus as a father's rights attorney is protecting the best interests of children and that is what I do. Absolutely. And I agree with you completely that a, that a normal, healthy, loving father is in, integral to a relationship, and I support that certainly tremendously. Jeffrey Living, Seth Goldstein, and Garland Waller, thank you very, very, very much. 13th Juror Numbers coming up next.